This is music, and this is another stack of songs from the puke box. Welcome to another episode of Songs from the Puke Box, the worst titled What's Spinning series ever. I admit that. In these videos, I share with you and talk about, maybe recommend, maybe warn against some of the music that I've been listening to throughout the week. Uh, this time, uh, actually, this episode is a bit heavy on cassette tapes. I do have some vinyl and I do have some CDs. And let's start with the CDs. Now, if you've watched the uh, last couple of episodes of songs from the Puke Box, um, I've talked about a lot about Jethro Tull. And in the previous episode, I said that maybe I like the 80s stuff a bit more than the 70s stuff. Of course, you do have in their 70s stuff, you do have like classics like Aqualung, and uh, so I decided, basically I decided to just listen to all the Jethro Tull CDs I have in my collection. And it's not, it's far from their entire discography, but I, I really like Jethro Tull, as you have uh, figured out. And it was actually pretty nice to listen to the CDs I have. So uh, Aqualung, uh, a classic, uh, it has, uh, the title track is a classic and uh, I would say Cross-Eyed Mary as well. Those are the two highlights for me, for sure. And um, Aqualung is dark. It's kind of heavy, I would say. And the lyrics are creepy. And then you have uh, Cross-Eyed Mary, which is strangely groovy. And the, the lyrics are also kind of, of uh, disturbing to some extent. Uh, Maiden covered um, Cross-Eyed Mary. But it's... It's no uh, surprise or coincidence that this is a classic because it's fantastic, it's dark, it's different. Um, <clears throat> it has the folky parts, it has some very heavy parts. Uh, to me, it's it's progressive. Um, and, and uh, you know, if, if you like dark and heavy music and you don't know Jethro Tull, just check out Aqualong and Cross-Eyed Mary and keep in mind that it's not extreme metal or anything like that, but... It was very nice to just uh, listen to this one again because it's been a while. And another classic, of course, uh, Thick as a Brick. Um, one song originally, it had to be split up in two parts, though, because, you know, side A, side B. Uh, this version uh, here has four tracks on it. Some um, part one and part two, of course, and then... Uh, a live rendering of uh, portions of the song and then an interview and this is just a musical journey you got everything uh, on here uh, there's some again like relatively heavy stuff there's some folky stuff there's some soft stuff some dark stuff some uplifting stuff um, just a musical journey and what I like about it is that originally it was kind of intended as far as I understand to be like a parody on the self-indulgence of prog rock and then it became a prog rock classic itself um if you don't like long songs this is not for you i think but if you like long songs and you like progressive rock thick as a brick is a classic it is something that is definitely worth checking out and many many years later uh jethro tall or ian anderson um, it's actually called here, Ian Anderson's, uh, sorry, Jethro Tull's Ian Anderson, uh, T-A-A-B-2, Thick as a Brick 2, uh, kind of revisited uh, the theme and did a second part. It's it's um, it's not bad, I would say. There's some, actually some pretty good songs on here, too. Um, it's perhaps a bit more polished, uh, but that might be the modern production um his voice is not as strong on here as it is on on this one but i mean aging and all that stuff 
Uh, but I think it's 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 a pretty good follow up uh, for sure. Maybe it wasn't necessary per se, uh, but I, I enjoy listening to it every now and then. So uh, that completes my dive into all the Jethro Tull CDs I have in my collection. I have one vinyl version of Heavy Horses as well, um, and that that cost me next to nothing. Um, but yeah, I don't have everything by Jethro Tull. Uh, so I'm open to recommendations, of course, uh, but yeah, I enjoyed revisiting them because it's been a while. And then I also just managed to squeeze in uh, a listen uh, here, uh, Kind of Magic by Queen, one of my favorite bands, uh, but th th this is not a Queen record. I reach for that often. There are lots of songs on here that had they had a different singer, um, they would be terribly cheesy but just because freddie mercury was such an awesome singer it kind of uh saves them to me it's not a bad album i have to say it's just not my favorite i do really like one vision that's a hard rocker uh kind of magic is not the best song i think on here but uh you know it's it's uh, a well-known song and it's catchy and all that stuff um you also have, you know, Who Wants to Live Forever, which is uh, an epic ballad. I think that's fair to say. And that's the kind of ballads that I like, you know, a well done ballad. Um, and of course, it's, you know, um, linked to uh, the Highlander uh, movies. Um, so there's a song called Don't Lose Your Head as well. So there's some pretty decent uh, songs on here. Uh, and then you have One Vision, which is a great hard rock song. And you have Who Wants to Live Forever, which is a great epic ballad. And you have some songs that would be, in my opinion, terrible and cheesy. Had um, They had a different singer and uh, maybe had they had a different guitar player. Uh, so not my favorite Queen album, but I like listening to it every now and then. Let's turn to the cassettes. So... Uh, I bought this one a while ago and I hadn't listened to it yet, so I decided to give it a spool to listen to it, Sabotage by Black Sabbath. And um, it's kind of interesting how listening to uh, the same album on different formats kind of changes your appreciation of the um, the music on here. I Normally I listen to this one on, on a CD that I've had forever, basically. Uh, but listening to it on the cassette tape, having to flip it over, kind of changed the uh, experience a bit. So you have Hole in the Sky, a uh, super groovy song. Uh, one of my you know favorites on here. Uh, you have a Symptom of the Universe, heavier song. Um, some people say it's the birth of thrash metal, I don't know. Uh, and then Megalomania, the last song on side A, which normally is just kind of kind of drowns in the middle when I listen to it on the CD. But now it's kind of highlighted because it's the last part of side A. So I really enjoyed listening to that one in a way that I hadn't enjoyed it before. On side A, you have uh, the massive uh, Super Tsar uh, with that choir um deep you know uh, baritone voices and it's a great song it's it's a piece of art i would say um thrill of it all uh, again that's another song that's the first song on side a that i learned to kind of 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 appreciate it in a different light because now it's not sandwiched somewhere in the middle now it's suddenly the first uh part of side b so that's one of the reasons why I've really enjoyed going back to uh, collecting cassette tapes and also uh, vinyl, of course. That doesn't mean that I don't like listening to it on, on the CD. It's just a different experience. Anyways, uh, Black Sabbath. And by the way, this is an Irish um, uh, release. Don't know how it ended up in Copenhagen, but it did. And the next one is from Bruce Dickinson's Skunk Work, uh, or Skunk Works, and this is a promo with two songs on it. I have no idea how uh, this one ended up in my possession. I think somebody just gave it to me back in the day uh, as a gift or something. Uh, but you have Inertia and Space Rays on here, and uh, they're both kind of more like uh, alternative 
metal from the 90s but with Bruce Dickinson's vocals and actually both of them are very good uh, Space Race kind of stands out to me here uh, I do have the entire album on vinyl but it was pretty cool to uh, listen to this one uh, probably for the first time in more than two decades or something so there you go uh, something completely different now uh, Burning Red Ivanhoe shorts um, burning head, burning head, burning red Ivanhoe, um, and I think they're still active. I thought they had kind of folded because some of the members had passed away, but apparently they're still active. Uh, known as a kind of an art rock, uh, prog rock, jazz rock kind of band. Uh, on this one, uh, their style, I would say, is more kind of straightforward 80s rock maybe kind of new wave rock but it does have some saxophones and some jazz elements every now and then but most of the songs are pretty straightforward and you know quite enjoyable uh, a lot of them are sung in um, uh, danish um, i think there's only one maybe two songs that are not in danish um, so, uh, and the singer is Ole Fick. He's also a visual artist. He actually did this artwork and he's, I think that's his main uh, gig now. Uh, he's an actor, musician, and a visual artist, a painter. And he's known for making these uh, surreal pieces of art, uh, weird stuff. He even published a book with his art called Merkeli Maleria, which means weird paintings. Uh, they're pretty cool, actually. Anyways, back to the music here. It's decent new wave 80s rock with some progressive undertones. But if you want the really prog stuff, uh, you have to go back and listen to the 70s stuff. I think this one is from 1980, so maybe it's a bit ahead of its time, actually. But there you go. Up next, uh, Capilla Ardiente Solve et uh, Coagula. Um, and this is this is an EP from 2009. It has some bonus tracks on it. Uh, a cover version of uh, Waltz the Night, an Angel Witch song. And then a live version of one of their own songs, I think, called... Uh, into unknown lands and this is the very first thing they did live and the two regular songs are solva and coacula so this is uh traditional old school doom metal and it's great maybe it's even a bit uh, epic i would say it has some epic doom metal leanings but it's great it's slow but not super slow um, you got elements of traditional heavy metal popping up. It's quite melodic. The vocals are, you know, it's clean singing, but there's just a, a, an edge of desperation to the vocals, I'd say. If you like traditional doom metal, if you like epic doom metal too, and you haven't heard this EP, do check it out. You might like it. It's a bit of a gem, I would say. Um, so there you go. I also finally got around to listening to this one here, Half Past Human by Sirith Uncle. Uh, this is traditional heavy metal, uh, melodic, riffy, uh, old school, um, great stuff. The vocals are, you know, um, if you if you know Sirith Uncle, you know what you're in for. If you don't know Sirith Uncle, the vocals might be a turnoff because it's basically uh, a guy shouting um in a very unique and recognizable way i i quite like it i think it fits the music very well musically like i said traditional heavy metal and it's great stuff i really like this band and the cover art is always awesome uh, as well so half past human check it out um up next no prayer for the dying by iron maiden an album that is much maligned by a lot of even Iron Maiden fans. Uh, I actually quite like it. I consider this, this might be a, a hot take, a controversial. I consider this to be the last album of the first golden era uh, by Iron Maiden. Um, a lot of people consider this to not be part of the first golden era. They consider it to be part of the kind of 
dip they had in the 90s. But I really like this album. Um, I think one reason why it has a bad rep is the production. Uh, it sounds like it's recorded in a barn. Because it is recorded in a barn. Um, and they kind of stripped down the music and simplified it a bit. Because they came... Uh, you know, the previous album was Seventh Son of a Seventh Son, which was kind of a mammoth um, album, kind of progressive even, um, and a very sophisticated concept album. So they stripped down the sound a bit. And I guess another part that might be working against them is that um, this kind of songs they chose as singles are Holy Smoke, Bring Your Daughter to the Slaughter, and Tail Gunner. And Holy Smoke and Bring Your Daughter to the Slaughter are considered to be bad songs by Iron Maiden. Holy Smoke is kind of a light-hearted song. Uh, that's quite unusual. Bring Your Daughter to the Slaughter is... I don't think it's as bad as people make it out to be. Um, the lyrics is probably, probably what will put a lot of people off. It was intended to be part of the soundtrack of um, Nightmare on Elm Street movie. Bruce Dickinson did... Uh, a version of this with his solo band which is a lot of people hate even more but i i think that's pretty good too uh, but anyways uh you got tail gunner people have considered this a poor man's aces high but it, they're not trying to sound like aces high it's just because it's about a similar topic uh, you know uh, aerial warfare um i think it's a pretty good song i like it it's uh melodic it's catchy and it's a it's a fine opener uh no prayer for the dying is another example of a ballad done right i think i really love that song might be my favorite song of here and what i like about it is the um the guitar melodies uh, which are really catchy and haunting uh you have um some deep cuts as well uh public enema number one and uh, fate's warning and i actually really like the deep cuts on here i think they're the strong songs to be honest uh, and they also both of these songs remind me a bit of um, the approach um, very melodic approach they have on somewhere on time uh you have uh, the assassin that's another song that people kind of laugh at i quite like it um and of course, there is uh, Bring a Daughter to the Slaughter. I talked about that. Uh, it's actually, I think, had the lyrical content been different, Bring a Daughter to the Slaughter would have been a, a great song. Uh, chorus is a bit boogie rock, but, you know, it's okay. Uh, anyways, you have Run Silent, Run Deep, another deep cut. It's, this one is about U-boats and stuff. and That's another great song. You have Hooks in You, uh, uh, Adrian Smith song, although he was not in the band here. Um, Hooks in You is interesting. That's a bit more of a hard rock song, and it's actually not too dissimilar to some of the songs that Adrian Smith uh, has written within um, the recent years, uh, now that he's back in the band. And you have Mother Russia, an epic song. I think this album is great. The deep cuts are the strengths. The, the singles are are good i think uh but the deep cuts to me are the strengths of this album so there you go up next since i showed this one not too long ago i decided to give it a listen uh Uncle Kid joe uh america's least wanted this is an album i really liked back when i was uh young when it came out and i still like it i think it's i think it's great you have some great riffs on here now, this is interesting. Ugly Kid Joe, they were huge in the 90s, but I remember in the 2000s and 2010s, people started trashing them and dunking on them and talking about how bad they were. And now they've, they're kind of falling back into favor. Very interesting. The way these things are kind of cyclical. But you have some, I think, some great songs on here. It's lighthearted. It's, it's uh, hard rock. It's funky. Uh, there are some ballads on here that, you know, I could take him or leave him, probably leave him. But, you know, you have Neighbor. That's a nice funk hard rock song, you know, sing along, friendly, uplifting, humorous. You have uh, uh, So Damn Cool, which is damn cool. You got 
uh, Goddamn Devil um, featuring Rob Halford. I've heard that Halford also uh, sings on So Damn Cool just in the chorus. Uh, you have uh, Madman, uh, which uh, is a remix on here. That's another song I like. Uh, and you have Everything About You, their big hit. Uh, lots of good songs here. Of course, there's Cats in the Cradle. That was maybe their biggest hit. That's a song I, you know, I don't care that much for their version of it. But, uh, you know, you have Busy Bee, which is, is uh, a song that is kind of catchy. Uh, again, um, Come Tomorrow is quite groovy as far as I remember. So you got some good songs on here. You got some good riffs. Uh, it's not as bad as people used to say it was. I quite like it. Okay, turning to the vinyl. This is another one I showed recently, and I couldn't remember the style. Um, and I looked it up on on Discogs, and it said Thrash, Doom, Death. And um, I, I thought, you know, if I listened to it because I remember liking it. Uh, I don't hear any thrash, uh, but I think I get why. To me, this is Doom Metal with uh, blackened vocals, maybe a hint of 90s Death Doom. It is, as far as I remember, it is from the 90s. So it is 90s Doom. Um, we can call it Death Doom, but the vocals are kind of blackened. And uh, there are some parts that are not super slow. And I think that's what people call thrash metal. To me, there's no thrash on here. To me, it's Doom Metal with kind of blackened deathy vocals and it's actually very good i really uh, enjoyed listening to this again like i said i remember liking it i just couldn't remember what it sounded like but you have some very good doom death or death doom or parentheses death doom songs on here so if you like 90s death doom check this one out it's, it's actually very good Speaking of death and the 90s, I also decided to give this one a spin, Left Hand Path by Entombed. This is a kick-ass album. Um, I've mentioned this a couple of times before, back, you know, when do oh, sorry, death metal kind of exploded. I had a hard time uh, getting into it because of the vocals. Um, you had like a handful of bands that kind of converted me. Death is one of them. Uh, another one is um, Entombed and another one is Obituary so you had like a handful of bands and Entombed was one of the bands that I kind of, ah, this is actually, I kind of like this uh, this is great um, it, it has this meaty guitar tone that a lot of Swedish death metal continues to have and you have some some uh, you have some melody here you have some fantastic guitar solos some of them are frantic some of them are surprisingly melodic you have old school death metal riffage and uh, you have some almost like d beat kind of stuff going on here F amazing cover artwork too this is this is um this is a death metal classic and it's well deserved uh, for sure so if you like death metal and you haven't heard this one uh I would recommend checking it out because uh, it's it's like an authentic 90s death metal album and uh, I think you will like it. I also just actually, before shooting this video, I just gave this one a spin, Crimson Glory. Um, great music, kind of traditional metal with US power metal in it, um, some progressive metal too, soaring vocals. Uh, Great riffs, lots of, of uh, melody too, and just fantastic musicianship. Uh, Crimson Glory are, they seem, I mean, a lot of people talk about how much they like them, but they still seem to be kind of underrated and to go under the radar of a lot of people. Hopefully this reissue on Music on Vinyl will help bring more attention to them. Um, great stuff. I, I really like this. And uh, up last, another vinyl, one of my favorite bands, uh, Running Wild, Death or Glory. Uh, this is an album I don't reach for that often for some reason. Um, I've had it on CD forever, 
and uh, of course I bought the uh, reissues on vinyl when they came out um, but for some reason I don't reach for it uh, as often as say uh, Under Jolly Roger or uh, Pilot of Skulls or Port Royal and I don't understand why because uh, Death of Glory is a fantastic album it's just as great as as the other running wild classics so i i don't know why i don't reach for it often i did this time and i enjoyed listening to all the songs you have some running wild classics on there and uh, you have lots i mean running wild uh have this uh characteristic sound uh and characteristic chord progressions and uh, melodies and there are lots of things that have become kind of tropes in their style i would say and there's a lot of that on this album it's a great running wild album i'm glad i decided to listen to that one and not pile of skulls which i was reaching for i love pile of skulls one of my favorite albums uh but yeah so there you go um uh, a bunch of music i managed to listen to this time around uh if any of it sounds interesting do check it out Thanks for watching.